So today we're going to talk about one of my UK stocks that is on absolute fire. They have brought out a update on Monday this week and the update was absolutely amazing. So we're going to take a look at that update. And as well as that, we're going to talk about some UK stocks in general. I've seen a lot of negativity around UK stocks, which I think is pretty unfair actually. And uh, we're going to talk about that as well today. So I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get started. So first of all, I just want to talk about UK stocks in general. I've seen a lot of negativity around UK stocks at the moment. Whenever I'm making my videos on the YouTube channel and I talk about UK stocks, I'm seeing a lot of comments in the comment section about, oh, why would I want to invest in UK stocks? And then eventually I saw something that really pushed me over the line to go, you know what, I'm going to talk about this in today's video. And this post came up. It was an advertisement on Trading Tone 2 that came up in Facebook. And they were on about how to invest in UK stocks. And the post up here, which you can't see, basically said, oh, increase your diversification and make money on UK stocks. And this guy called John basically meant uh, put a sarcastic comment which was best of luck with that one mate as in you can't make money on UK stocks and I was like well that's not true I've seen plenty of money that have p plenty of investors that have made good money on UK investments in including myself and I actually saw there was a comment here from Rob Pierce now I was actually supposed to include his reply in the screenshot and I didn't and then I couldn't find the reply to do it so apologies for that but I know Rob actually watches the YouTube channel. I've seen him comment on the YouTube videos before. And Rob's comment was actually saying like, actually I invest in UK stocks and I've made good money from them. And he posted a lot of examples of the stocks that he's made money on on the UK market, which is a perfect example of someone that has had a lot of success on the UK market. Now, I don't know what it is about the UK market or UK people in general, we just always seem to put things down. We're always so negative about things. We can never be optimistic about things, which is really frustrating. I don't understand why we're always so negative on the situation. And I look at something like JD Sports, for example. Uh, JD Sports had a dip on last week, actually. The stock actually fell down around about 11%. And automatically, I just saw the negativity on that. I had people that were commenting on my YouTube videos going, ah, oh, JD Sports is down uh, 10, 11%, and they were, they were laughing about it. Now, obviously, <laughs> the stock actually recovered it all and even went higher after reporting the update, and it was up 15%, so it actually did present itself as a good buying opportunity. And I don't know what it is about UK stocks. There's a lot of UK stocks at the moment that are doing that, but it just showed you like the negativity that as soon as the stock fell down 11%, there was people People willing to already come on the YouTube channel and they were commenting like laughing at a UK stock. Now, I don't understand what goes on about this because I still find it strange that people are that desperate to like make fun of someone, like the makes fun of someone's investment. I, I don't understand it that people enjoy seeing other people fail. I, I, I've never wanted anyone in the stock market to fail with one of the investments. And I still don't understand how people still do it now. I, I mean, there's obviously people that hate me. I mean, people that I don't even know that watch the YouTube channel that come on and just are desperate to post hate comments. I, I, it's crazy that they live their life like that. And that's what makes them happy is that they like to give out hate. I mean, there's people that watch my YouTube channel and are desperate to give me hate in the comment section. And I just don't know why it happens. And I could not believe once again that as soon as we saw JD Sports fall 11%, then obviously then the negativity straight came out. But getting back to the point about UK stocks is like, I think people just judge the FTSE 100. I think they judge the FTSE 100 and go, oh, it's done nothing. I think people look at the FTSE 100 and they go, oh, it's only up 6.8% year to date. That's terrible. Look at the S&P 500. But they don't ever look past it. And I think it's really lazy investing that people just go, UK stocks are bad. Look at the FTSE 100 compared to the S&P. I mean, when you start looking under the surface, there's so many good stocks on, under there. You know, if you start looking at outside of the FTSE 100, which are very mature and not very exciting companies, there's been a lot of very good performers on the UK market. And it's like the S&P 500, you know, okay, it looks like it's outperformed the FTSE 100, but how much of that has come from NVIDIA? If you didn't have NVIDIA, has it actually performed that well? And you start digging under like the opportunities that are there and you have something like Greg's. Greg's is a stock that I've owned. I've owned Greg's for around about four years. Um, I held my shares. I sold a good chunk out uh, over half my position for over 100% return. And then it even had another dip and you could have bought that opportunity and made really good money. And overall, Greg's has been a pretty good performer in the UK market. If you held Greg's for around about the last 10 years, you've got a 454% return. That's not a bad investment. That's outperformed the S&P 500. And yet, if you're from the UK, 
you know, it's great owning. I, I'm not saying that you shouldn't own US stocks because there's some, you know, brilliant companies out there, worldwide companies, but why not use the UK to your advantage? It's obvious if you walk down a high street, I'm sure you would have seen the queues outside Greg's in 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017. I'm sure you've seen more and more Greg's open up in your local area. Why not use that knowledge you have of going, that Greg's is doing well, look at the queue at 9 a.m. for everyone to get a bacon sandwich and a coffee and look at the new store they've just opened up down the road. Oh, and now they've opened another one up at the other side of the uh, town. Like, at what point do you not use that advantage to turn it into something that really works out for you as, as an investment. And this is a, once again, a classic performance outperform, you know, the, the yes, even the S&P 500. I mean, Dark Trace, another one that I own, and uh, this stock returned 100%. It's very rare that we have tech companies in the UK, and then we have a fantastic tech company, and uh, it does absolutely amazing. Jet2, um, you know, normally many people go, oh, don't touch airlines, but Jet2, same again, you would, if you are from the UK, Surely you've been to the airports, you've seen how busy the Jet 2 flights are, surely you've seen the good reviews, and once again, um, even though I've owned it for like the last couple of years, I've, uh, I was up over 100% on my position, and e even outside of that, same again if you had this stock in the, you know, the last decade, you're up 533%. You know, JD Sports, same again, you walk down the high street, you would have seen how popular they're coming, they're opening up more stores. You own this stock since 2014, you've got a 723% return. You look at Card Factory, another stock that you own, uh, you know, from 2020, uh, this stock is up over 123% since that time frame. And you would have seen that, oh, hold on, Card Factory, they're doing really well, they're clearing the balance sheet, the stores are getting busier. You know, another pri another prime example. And then what we also have in the UK market that the US market doesn't have is we have some absolute beast of dividend companies. You know, 7% dividend yield from Aviva. I mean, I've owned Aviva for a while. I'm up 20% on Aviva. Um, so for me as well, my dividend percent that I'm, yield that I'm getting is over 8% on this stock. And once again, a really good performer. Get collecting a 7% dividend, dividend yield. Legal in general, you're getting an 8% dividend yield. And another stock that I'm up uh, some good money on. Barrett Developments. I mean, if you're from the UK, surely you've seen the demand for the UK uh, the UK house builders and the amount of housing that we require and same again you had the opportunities to get this one at really good levels you could have got it in 2022 uh, and you'd be up 46% you could have bought in uh, the, the whole CV situation and at some point you would have been up 63% and then you would have even had an opportunity to add in even more and I just don't understand why people put the UK stocks down I mean obviously like I said there's negative people out there there's people that like to, that enjoy being negative and putting hate out there. It's confusing, don't get me wrong, I get confused why people enjoy you know, putting hate out there and I even I get it sometimes. Um, but apart from you know, them people that are just a little bit messed up in the head with no other way to put it, you have clear opportunities in, your mar in, in the UK market that are great performers. Not just great performers be from a UK standard, but you know, clear performers that outperform even the S&P, the mighty S&P 500. Some, you know, great dividend players out there that will give you lovely dividends anyway. So it's just absolutely bonkers to me that people are so negative still on the UK markets. If you can look in the right place, guys, there's, there's money to be made in the UK market and I never understand um, the negativity to the UK market. And as soon as I post like a UK video, there'll probably be some comments on this video. People are, you know, bashing UK stocks. You know, if you can do it right, there's good money to be made, guys. You know, they're on your doorstep. You have the advantage there, you know. Why why be scared of that advantage? Why not use that advantage anyway? Anyway, I, on the Patreon, I did actually just do a earnings review of JD Sports. So if you do want to see a video on JD Sports and their earnings, join through the link in the description. £5 a month for you guys. As well as that, get some free shares on Trading 2 and 2. Join through the link in the description. That's the broker I use. And just to let you know, the Hims and Hairs poster, if you have ordered, and by the way, I didn't actually realise how many of you guys watch from the USA? Jeez, look, I sent so, I was a little bit expensive on that postage, I tell you that. Um, so anyway, if you have ordered one of the posters, guys, uh, they have gone out on Monday. But there is a couple left, so if you do want to get your hands on one of the Hims and Hers posters, uh, I'll number them all. There's up, there's 50, uh, well, there's not 50 now, but there was 50, um, and I'll number them, and I'll also squiggle a bit of JKR investing on them as well, and uh, I'll get those out for you guys. There's not many left, so this is probably your last chance to get one if you do want one. Um, but anyway, the whole point of this video was to put, supposed to be on a hold ball. Once again, another cracking UK company, uh, one stock that I started buying during the whole 
COVID situation. And um, from that time frame there, the stock is up over 126%. I'm up around about just short of 100% on this position because I have been averaging up because I still think the company has plenty of upside. And on Monday, they brought an update out which confirmed I still think this company can do very well in the next few years. 16 times earnings. I think this is a brilliant UK company. I think they should be trading at least at a market average of 20 times earnings. In fact, I think they should trade at a premium of probably 22, 23 times earnings. So I still think this is undervalued from this point of view. And that earnings is dropping because the profit is absolutely being smashed at the moment. And um, smashed in a good way. It's, it's going up a lot. Um, and dividend yield of 3.7%. For me personally, because of my average, I'm collecting around about a 6% dividend yield as well, which is really nice to get that 6% dividend yield. So I still think this stock has a good 30-40% undervalued, and I still think there's a lovely dividend to be collected here, and that's why I still hold the stock, and financially, they keep improving. Now, since the update, the stock hasn't really moved that much, but I think over the long term, as you can see here, if they do keep bringing out the updates and the financials move in the right direction, they will get the reward and the share price will move up, as you can see here previously. And uh, what a good performer this has been actually since uh, the IPO as well, uh, being a good performer with a nice dividend. But I'm sure most of you guys know they're at Hollywood Bowl. They're a company that runs bowling alleys, but they have also expanded from the UK into Canada. And they also have the arcades, the bars, they have the put stars, which is like a mini golf as well inside the venues in a couple of them. Now they came out with their half year, the interim results for the six months ended uh, March 31st, as you can see here. The headline was excellent performance driven by continued investment in customer experience and further growth in Canada. And that was definitely key. Uh, the, the growth in Canada was uh, very good in this quarter. 8% revenue growth, a lot of it driven by Canada, which we'll show in a second. 10% uh, profit before tax, um, the group profit after tax was 5%. Obviously there's the, uh, the tax increase going on in the UK at the moment. Um, and by the way, this was a year that the company was actually supposed to not grow and also the profit was supposed to go down. So very good as well. Um, analysts have actually just started to update their growth targets for this year as well, showing growth. So a little bit slow from the uh, analysts there and they're starting to update them, but the revenue overall has been uh, growing really well and uh, should, the profit should continue to grow uh, very well, as you can see here. Um, because they are driving up the profitability, they have increased their dividend. Um, as you can see here, the dividend per share has increased by 21%. So a lot of that profit is now also being returned to shareholders. So you are you are actually going to get even a bigger dividend from here. UK like flight growth of 1.3%. But as you can see here, 8% from Canada. That's where the big growth is at the moment. That's the big expansion plan they have, plan they have going on. Uh, we have 71 UK centres. Uh, they re have refurbished their centre in Watford, Stockton and Cardiff. And um, they have also acquired a centre in Lincoln. So still growth there. Solar panels installed in two further centres that are currently ex putting a lot of solar panels on the centres to improve the gross margins, which is good. Uh, a new centre in Dundee, uh, which will be open in May 2024, uh, which is after the period end as well. So new venues that will be increasing that profit and revenue. So I actually think this will carry on increasing nicely because of these new venues that do come in. Uh, two new put stars, so that's the mini golf have in two Hollywood Bowl centres. Pins on strings installed in six centres, so that's now 90%. So they're nearly maxed out on the pins on strings now on the UK. Um, estate but what this will do is the pins on strings uh, they don't have to get the technician in to put the actual bowling pins back up so that increases the gross margin so this is really helping them and that's why we've seen a lot of a really good improvement in the profitability you know really good profit margins they have here uh, but they've nearly maxed that out but still um, nearly there now Canada they have got to 11 centers now so this has been uh, obviously ramping up really well and you can see here that the, the Canada was the, uh, the really strong part as you can see here the total revenue growth was of uh, 46 percent which is uh fantastic and as well if you look at the ebitda as well a uh, good ramp up on the ebitda point of view as well that's going on as well so you got that revenue and profit growth drive both going on two centers acquired and um, i'm not going to try say that one but there was one in um ontario and van uh, uh, it was in ontario and vancouver uh, they have built a new center in waterloo as well that will be opened up in june 2024 so that's going to be another once again contributor to the the financials two new centers signed in calgary in Ottawa as well. Uh, a refurbishment of a site completed in June 2024. I mean, just look at all these drivers they're going to have as well this year. This is why I can't believe analysts were forecasting negative profit and revenue growth. But like I said, they have started to update them at least a little bit now. And um, the outlook here, um, they talked about the inflationary pressures being hedged. 
UK uh, UK energy hedged as well, but I don't think that'll be as big as an issue as what it was, you know, a year ago, two years ago. Uh, new investment in the website as well, and uh, well positioned to grow the estate to 130 centres. That's the target. So obviously we've got the 71 in the UK and the 11 now in the Can in Canada as well. Um, but Canada is going to be the big growth driver, and I wonder if they'll go to the US after Canada. We'll see. Um, but obviously, yeah, 130 centres is obviously uh, really good. But the big thing why they went to Canada over US is because they saw that big more frag fragmented market in Canada and, and it looks like they're having the big success from it. So yeah, overall a really, really strong update and uh, as long as the revenue and financials, the profitability keeps going up in that direction, obviously yeah, we should get rewarded on the share price point of view, which we have been doing. Um, financial health wise, um, once again, still a very good balance sheet. The balance sheet is still very strong, as you can see here, no debt on there. Um, cash wise, they're sitting on uh, 41 million of cash, so they've still got a lot of options with the cash. Um, and obviously, with the profit they throw off, you've got a pretty good dividend here, and um, that should continue to get hyped up, uh, which we've already seen. You know, there was a big jump in the dividend that happened um, in this quarter, and potentially a special dividend as well. Um, there has been some insiders selling a couple of shares, which is probably the only little negative, but I personally won't worry about that because a lot of these insiders, um, they've They've, they've deserved it you know a lot of them bought in this dip here and they've made a lot of money um, and then a lot of them bought in the dip in 2022 and they've lot made a lot of money and uh, yeah you know um, if I had bought in that dip and I had bought quite heavy like how they had um, I probably would want to release some capital and take that out to go spend on uh, the deserved from the performance and also buying on the dip so uh, i don't think there's anything wrong with that but a few people might end up pointing uh, that out but not a major issue for me so yeah overall um, a really good update you know profit in the right direction revenue in the right direction balance sheet still strong You've got the dividend that's going uh, up as well. Uh, you know, quality financials for a company that's under the market average. I still think it's undervalued from a share price point of view. Um, so I, I own the stock and I will continue to own the stock and also collect my dividend and also expect some share price appreciation. Um, if there was to ever have a dip of, you know, 20, 30 percent, I'd even probably look to actually add in my position there on hold ball. But it's been a very good performer that we've had on the channel for the last kind of three or four years now that does really well. And uh, overall, just a quick chat on the UK stocks at the moment. I think if you can look in the right place um, you know the ones that I'm certainly looking at I believe that gaming realms is another what we have with a dark trace point of view where we have a quality UK stock that is undervalued I look at money supermarket another quality UK stock that looks undervalued I think if you do look in the right place and um, you definitely will be able to get your rewards like we've seen with Greg's Jet2 Sports Direct Aviva Legal in general so um, I just thought that we, we needed someone to come out here and be optimistic on the UK market I know sometimes there's a English slash Russian slash messy looking hair guy that sometimes is always bashing the UK market even though he never posts what he's buying and his returns. I know sometimes he can put the UK market down but I think we need someone on here to kind of stick up for them and I think if you do the right things you can do well in the UK market guys as well so I thought, thought I'd point that one out anyway. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video guys, thanks for watching, if you could hit that like button, let me know your love for the UK stocks as well in the comment section, I'm sure there's going to be a few bears out today after the, uh, the fuming after today's video so uh, make sure you put something down in the comment section as well. <laughs> Apart from that, thanks for watching guys, see you in a bit.